Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have another repair video here. Well, I'm already halfway through the job, so let me share at least the installation. I wasn't going to share this, but I am, you know, it's been a long time since I don't put a video on a porch, and this is a beautiful car, so I want to show you that. So again, this is a 2000 Porsche Boxster, 2.7 liter. Uh, the problem we have here before, it was a, a link condition on both banks. And um, yes, I did a smoke test and it was on both of the intake manifolds. Uh, I think two of the injector rings was uh, leaking as well. So I have all the parts. I have already removed everything. And I wanted to show you also for this repair, I removed the wing, which is, you know, this is a convertible. Convertible. Sorry, guys. I was able to bring the convertible back and then unhook the the bottom part of the convertible let me show you what you need to do you need to remove these two wires of cables that connect in here and then this it's just a cover here and it has a leap that connects to um, two brackets right this bottom so when i did that I remove the wing, like I said, it's just three tens on each side. You remove it, put it away, make sure that you don't scratch that. I have also uh, some fender protections. So if I lean down, I don't use belts, so I never scratch the cars and the clothes that I use are soft, but I still wanted to be extra careful. So again, on the repair, I was able to bring the convertible back to the front and then these arms, they just go down and they're not in my way. I think the last video I recorded, I didn't show that. I also replaced the starter as you can see. Uh, before you proceed to any repairs, you need to clean everything. Well, I did uh, always clean that. And uh, I put this just paper towels in there so no debris goes inside. I got the manifolds already clean. This is the other side, and these are the center pieces. I am putting all the center uh, rubbers, or I don't even know how to call that, colors, uh, new. They're all original from porch. I just took one out of the bag, so you guys can see how it looks. They're made in Italy. I got all the clamps. I mean, this is a 2000 year, so we're talking about 19 years old. I got all these O-rings, and again, the O-rings for the uh, injectors as well are new. One second, guys. Hi, right, guys. I set you in the tripod, and uh, I'm just going to be showing you from a distance what I'm doing. Again, this is just a repair video. What I'm doing right now is putting a little bit of a lubrication on the O-rings for the injectors before I set up. Uh, the manifold in place for that you can use lubricate or any other uh, lubricant that is not uh, bad for the rubber the lubricate that I'm talking about is uh, for engine assembly sorry if the volume changes a little bit in there I was doing some corrections all right so uh, on this side you will have a an intake air temperature sensor here you can leave it here just unplug it we have the air pump which I live here and this is the hose that goes to the air pump sorry you might not be able to see that but well so here and this goes through the manifold so make sure the gaskets are in place I always keep the screws or bolts uh, with a magnetic tray handy to me this is going to be a little tricky to get it in. Not so bad. It's just so many hoses and things on the way. And the tray might be in the way a little bit too. Just make sure that you go easy. Try to pull the injectors uh, back a little, and you're gonna have two hoses to go through. 
one is a flexible one that goes in between the um, uh, crankcase ventilation uh, system, which is right here, and it goes right here all the way to the other side. Why do you have this connected? Because this one goes through the intake. Yeah, <laughs> make it, believe me, it is, it is hard to do, but it's doable. All right, I got the hoses away. And now this one is the one is uh, just holding me. Just got to wiggle it. Everything has to go soft. Don't force anything. And then the first thing we're going to do is put a couple of the, of the balls to hold the manifold. This fan is making the sound go away. This, this uh, microphone tries to remove the sound of that fan. It's not too hot today, but it is hot. All right, so those bolts are 10 millimeter. Gonna use a Milwaukee cordless and uh, I will keep that ratchet here. Just a regular ratchet. These are the bolts for that. I always keep a magnet with you. I like to just set the balls in place. So what I do, keep it in there, and as soon as they go in a hole, I just slide the, the magnet to the side, and then that releases the ball without taking it back with the magnet. It's a good trick. Again, you want to set as much as of these or all the balls for the manifold you don't need to tie it anything yet till you have them all in place because you're going to be in the need to move a lot a lot of the stuff there isn't a way don't connect any of the hoses I'm just snugging it. And here I got two, and they're like diagonal, so that's going to help me at least position the manifold close to where it goes. Yeah, these ones are in good shape. Alignment wise. Gonna do the same. Oop, do the same thing. Just a snug it. You see the manifold will go down a little bit. And I use a, a locking extension so the socket stays. Now the two on the side, these uses four in the center and one in each side. Those are the ones that are a little harder to install because of the position and hoses around. Like this one has this uh, again the crank crankcase ventilation hose is it makes it very hard to install the bolt in there. So make sure that you put that one or that hose last I don't think I am in the hole correctly so let's lose this money for a little bit maybe a little bit too snug Yeah, that one, that one was too tight. Summer and allergies. <laughs> oh, my back. This car are the worst for your back. Can 
Come on. Did I have it tight? I didn't feel it going in. I guess it did. Yeah. Wanna double check with with the mirror. Double check that the actual ball went all the way in. Yes, it did. All right, so let's leave that one like that. I'm, I know it's a little tight, but it might not be a problem to get the last one in place, hopefully. And for that one, I go through here because for the back is almost impossible. So magnets are the best for this. Hopefully, you guys pick up this trick. I just put that bolt in there. Not a problem. And I'm going to use a, a shorter extension for that. As far as I remember, I couldn't use a ratchet for that because of the space. The fuel hose is on my way. I'm trying to find the, the bolt position to do it. I got it. As you can see, it's super tight space. My stand is still still in the way. That might be better. <laughs> yeah. I don't get that much of wind, but it's not taking the sound away. The microphone. All right, so this one is going perfect. This one wicked tight. And I'm sorry, but you cannot get the torque wrench on that one. Got a ground wire here in my way as well. And a flexible hose. All right, those two are tight. If you're a new tech and you want to get the torque specs, no problem. 10 millimeters, usually get no more than 10 newton meters. And this is not a cylinder head, so the actual manifold itself has a bushing, so you're not squeezing the plastic, right? All right, those are done. Hopefully you guys are looking. All right. I just the camera just a little bit a little better. It was it wasn't bad. I just want you to see me a little more. Right now I am located the fuel rail from this side. Three injectors on this side, obviously, right? So B6, right? I'm going also to connect the intake uh, temperature sensor. It's already done. And this orange should, should, should just uh, drop very easy, very soft, especially with the lubrication that I just put on. Perfect. New rings. So everything should be good in there. Also, you'll see in your car, um, the harness on top of the injectors, they had a few clips 
kind of like a clamps you can open i would recommend you to release those because that will give you a little more a room to maneuver because everything in here is is tight all right before i almost forgot before we set the injectors we need to put that uh crankcase ba uh, ventilation hose Ooh, that would be a hard thing to do with the injectors in place and it's a breeze if you do it now you'll see it's this same hose here hopefully you guys can see it's just a, a flexible a squeeze connection that has an arena on it got my jack in the way floor jack come on well the left If the ring uh, fights you, I have found that a little bit of a WD-40, it makes it just go in and click perfect. That will get dry as soon as the car starts. So you see, I was fighting that wire, I mean that uh, connection with the WD-40 went boom. Took the time to wash all the intake manifolds and everything. I like to work with clean parts. And I'm just resetting the injectors. You're probably better to start with the front one. And the rest should go easy down. It's, it's just secure with two 10 millimeter bolts. Use the trick of the magnet always. Sometimes, depending on the ball, you can even spin it and get it kind of like a start. Oh, just drop it. I thought I had it. And no. at least in here, we got the cylinder heads on the bottom. So it's not like that you're dropping it on, you know, in the middle of the engine or something like that. So it's not such a dangerous position. just super tight but with this uh, way that I did this time by lowering the arms in here is so much better if you go back to my first videos I got another one and uh, I think it's a 99 on 98 doing the same repair and I work with I re did remove the the wing but I left the arms up and I was always going around. I don't know why I didn't thought about bringing these ones down. And I did this time, so I'm also sharing that with you. Trying to set up those two little balls. As you can see in there, I am spinning the ball with the magnet. And now I can remove it. And let's tie those up. <laughs> My manager just went by. This is a great shop. All people here is very friendly. It's a very good environment. Very happy to work in here. Again, that is easy. It's just holding the rail in place. 
I am going to now put the auxiliary air pump in place. Uh, that has a connect uh, or connection right here, and that will face the engine. We got three nuts in here, 10 also. Don't tie anything until you have all in place. The pump itself is uh, mounted in, in rubber mounts. Everything's going well good. Now let me get the socket. I don't need any extension for that. Looking for the third one. All right. Now we need a 13 to put that ground in place. That ground goes from the bottom starter bolt to the um, frame. So from engine to frame. It's a very important ground, so make sure it's clean and connected. And now we can plug this motor if I find a connector right here. All right, it does all on this side, so I'm going to move the camera to where I am right now, putting the boots and then setting up the other intake manifold. All right, guys, I set you up on the other side. As you can see, I set up the boots, the clamps, tools, and parts that I'm going to need. So I don't waste uh, much time on that for the video. All right, before I remove those uh, towels from the intake holes, I'm going to lubricate the uh, rings as I did on the other side. Very important. And it's very important as well to keep that clean. And that's why I clean the, the cylinder head in there so I don't get much debris or anything on the or rings itself. Now we don't need this grease no more. This side is going to be a little tighter and it's the hardest uh, to install because of that uh, hose and other things that you need to connect in this side. It's not a, a crazy thing but it is hard. So we got this line in here, which goes to the middle pipes. So you have to fight with that. You have this one in here, and then this line in here. And obviously the injectors the, on this side, and we have the air box, is it's a lot tighter. All right, so let's uh, set up the, the tubes first. Um, these rubbers or tubes, they got two different kind. One that has a vacuum or connection and another one that doesn't. So you'll see on yours, uh, the one towards the front 
on that side is the one that has that connection. It will be facing down, and then you will have a valve in the, in the vacuum line for that. So we can put the clamps in, in here. Let's set this one in there. It's kind of like in my way to see. We can just set one. Trying to find the best uh, position. It's getting hot. Now, uh, swamp cooler is unbelievable. Need to go first. Yeah, I'm going to have to take it out. The nipple is not letting me put the clamp. I know. I don't know how I pulled the other one out. Shouldn't come up. All right. Let's go back again. Set it close to where you need it to be. Make sure that nipple is going to stay in open position, which is super important because otherwise you will get no suction, right? All right, yes. Plug it in. Uh, is that eight? I don't remember. No, I think it's quarter of an inch or seven. Let me try with one of the clamps. Seven millimeter. Wanted to tie that uh, clamp, the back one. Especially on this one, you need to tie that one up because you want to make sure the, the vacuum axis on that nipple is always open. Because if you leave it loose and then you put that pipe in and it gets covered, it will get no suction. Let's be careful with that. Um, this one should be more simple. No nipples. I know you guys are going to say something weird. I didn't say anything, right? I know that I'm saying the nipples are giving me problem, but I'm referring to the vacuum one. So that's up to you guys, not me. All right, so again, those are tight. We can start putting these ones on. And now let me remember the position. Because I know this one goes on the back. And obviously, the hose goes connected in there. I, I need to put the clamps, I know that. I'm just setting up uh, on place. Or we can put the clamp if we want to, it doesn't matter. I am going to be removing it back. So this hose is in my way, but. I have a auto valve, well, you guys didn't see this before, but how I know that this valve goes this way, because when I remove this uh, actuator, this is just a solenoid vacuum actuator, right? This goes mounted on, on this intake manifold. So I leave the long hose to connect under this boot. You're gonna have to, or I'm gonna have to connect that from under it. And then the other line, which is the actuator on here, is this hose that goes connected in here, right? So that's it. And then position wise, um, you're gonna have to leave it or I'm gonna have to leave it loose because you can always, you know, play with it a little bit. So we can pull the clamps.
I always try to um, put the two clamps in the same position so it looks asymmetric. Can tie this a little more. No, I think it's too much. And it's out. May get this out. Want to tie the clamp, but it's kind of like pulling it out for some reason. Yeah, that's better. And it's still super loose, so it should be no problem. Mm -hmm. And that's it for now. It actually looks pretty good. And you have a, an arrow. This one tries to go all the way in, and I know it's not supposed to, so. You just go to the collar. You'll see it on yours. It has a, a groove. Just let it sit in there. You may see this hose under here. And then this has a flexible that goes in between here and the uh, um, crankcase ventilation uh, valve. Right, so let me go that side, sorry guys. Might be a little bit on your way to see, but I need to plug that in. Oh, that brace feels good. Again, if you're having any issues or doesn't want to go soft in, just spray a little bit WD-40. When you push that in, it will disappear. <clears throat> Why is not going in she have a position I think this one does it has a right in the collar it has a, a position for the lock so you don't move or don't move it I don't see that in here no this one looks like it can go in in any position. It's just a O-ring swollen a little bit. I mean, this manages oil, so in this case, it's actually the O-ring a little swollen, so if you see that, See what I did in there? Just went with a screwdriver. Don't push your hard because otherwise you will cut the ring. And that's it. It's in. Put that manifold back in there. So it's handed to me. And I don't think this is in the perfect position, but it's very close. Or the clamp screw right there.
They're not fully tight. I don't think I can move the the middle part of the manifold the way I have tight those up, but it also helped me keep it in a steady. You'll see the you know the next part of the rubber. That's what that position and the other nipple will go. There's a long hose for that, but it is done. Wanted to see how I want to put those clamps. I think I can phase it the, the same way I did the other ones. So, and that's just personal preference. You can put it in any way or how you like, however you like it. Remember, you're tied in on plastic, so don't over tight it. I'm gonna tie those a little more. I think we're very close to position. We'll see. We'll see in a second. All right, so now the farm part will start. I have two more rings to install in there. I'll show you in a second. I'm getting it. So we have the the one in the throttle uh, valve or throttle body should be right here, yeah. But then also this is a small one right here. I always leave those to the end so they don't fall or because it's not like that we have a spare of those, right? And I am not sure if the dealer quality or ring is the same that you get on those kits or not, but I don't wanna I don't wanna know. <laughs> I always think the quality of those are, are good though. I still will consider that the same. Alright, so I'm just poking the gasket itself to get it out. That's it. And it has a tab. You'll see it. Let me let me show it to you. So as you can see it's not a fully round and it has this little tab facing this side. Just make sure that you put that on the right direction, otherwise the gasket will get damaged when you try to tie the the throttle valve or throttle body. All right, that looks good. Ah, this is going to be so much fun. This one goes through the intake. This one does too. And this hose is just the one is a neighbor. All right, so. You know what, guys? I'm going to remove these rubbers. The hoses, this side, I don't need those. They're just going to be in my way. 
because I need as much room as possible. We can leave that one here connected to the host, but not in there because I need as much as room as possible to make this work. And we have a clamp under the intake that you need to tight before you, you do the whole thing. So you'll see it in yours. Yes, watch me have fun. <laughs> I mean, don't don't force anything. It's not like like hard of strength. It's just hard of room. I hope it makes sense what I'm saying to you. But if you play smart and do things without you know pushing too hard, it will go smooth. The main concern is this hose. It has to go in through the intake under the ejectors and connect onto that place on the back. And we got a million things on the way. Oof. I'm gonna go around that uh, injectors. Wow. I don't know how I get it out, but I will get it in. Believe me, it is tight. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. A little bit of WD-40. Just like a mist. Especially with this one, a little empty, like not much, but I don't know why those WD-40 cans, as soon as you're like halfway, if you're not 100% horizontal, like with the, the straw, you're facing down, it will not even work. It is being like that forever, so. Ooh, that's going to be so hard to put just you know arm yourself with patience and try to play as smart as you can use use your intelligence like in this time I'm actually using a lone screwdriver because I cannot get my hand in there it's just to help me push the connector in place, which I think is going really good. Yep, it went in perfect. Whew, that was easy. That was actually super easy. I gotta get the gloves out of my hands. I am sweating so much. That's the thing I don't like about gloves, but I mean, you need it. Let me just, just double check that. That was so perfect. Yes, it is in as it should. Now we can get this and start putting everything back together. Those are gloves are very good for uh, cold weather, but for summertime, it's just like you can use it for what, an hour? And then it's like, it looks like you've been in a pool for a whole day. <laughs> so I'd rather use this one. I got these ones from uh, Harbor Freight. They're cheap, it's like a 199 a pair. And this still you get not as, as much a sensation uh, with those, for very accurate things, you you would not be able to use these ones. I don't I don't need that much of a feeling. And the good about these ones is uh, it has this kind of like a fabric, not like kind of this fabric on the back that is breathable, so your hands don't sweat. All right, that was a win-win on that. 
I'm just trying to adjust everything in place again. We can put this boot back where it goes. Let's die with that one. Mm -hmm. Just be gentle always when you put things on the car. As you see, I have a, a pick mat just for the tools, and I have extra layers on the bottom. So let's just remember that you're putting things on on the car surface, so don't uh, knock it down because you will create a dent, right? When well, you're not going in. The clamp too tight. Looks like it. Yeah. Now the last two clamps. It's going to set those in there. And then we can set the manifold in place. Hopefully everything will go smooth. The only thing that might fight you a little, it will be the injectors. In this side, um, Fuel rail is a lot tighter. They should have give you or give us a flexible connection on the end, knowing that you, we need to work in here. What are you gonna do? Remove an engine to this to do this repair? It's not fair for the mechanic. Obviously, working on these cars is labor-wise compared to any other vehicle. It's ridiculous. But, I mean, you want a porch? There you go. This is going to be a little tricky to do. I'm actually past the position, obviously, because I need to put the manifold inside these boots. And it's going well. Perfect. Perfect. When very smooth. I can deal with a clamp. It's a, an 8 millimeter bolt, core thread that holds the clamp from under the intake. Yes, it can be done. It's gonna be a little harder, but I'd rather fight with that than anything else because everything else has gone very smooth. Yeah, I need more filling my hands to put this bolt magnet. Same thing. Actually, in the back in here, there's a bracket. But just in case, if you have too much room, <laughs> then put a bracket in there to make it a lot harder. That's not so bad. Mechanics, which I have like born with three hands. Having this uh, headlight on your head all day it gets you headache. I've seen other guys, like one of my friends in here, that holds a flashlight with his mouth. Ooh, poor teeth. And we all do what is best for us, right?
I got four of the bolts of the manifold in place. Let's get those to zug. Those are the center ones, so we'll see. No one went down. Beautiful. Mm hmm. Time one here. All right, now let's try the last two. This one, I can just put them from here. It's just showing that I needed to push the manifold just a little bit. I haven't tied the center yet. Boots. Okay, this one. Oh, 50. Back it's not the same. All right, let's tie the, allow, tie the last one. And it's gone perfect. All right, now I can cut all of them. I like to do that by hand. Again, that's years of experience. I will recommend you guys to torque them. I do this on daily basis. Uh, like this side, you can torque that one, at least one of the last bolts is impossible. You cannot risk that. Okay, so I'm going to put this first. So the way this goes in, it's like this. So connector face up. And it has a clip that slides on the manifold. Hopefully you guys can see that. Probably it's a little too far away, but you'll see it on yours. So we can pull the connector away for now. Now we're gonna grab that hose and we got to go all the way to the other side and connect it on from underneath. I lost the, the line. I want to show you the struggles of all well, the little struggles that you really got to go through on doing these ones. I can feel the the line in there. Not in there yet. Hmm. Come on. Right there, I got it. Let's get the mirror. Make sure because otherwise I was going to be a uh, vacuum leak, right? And perfect. Yet yeah, it's all the way in. Beautiful. Let's give it a last push. But is in. Now I can grab the, the whole connection. I'm not going to say the word again. <laughs> uh, the mouth just dropped out. <laughs> And since that one is in, we can slide this in, connect the other one that is coming from the valve. We got another 
wire in here that goes to a middle connection. Why is that so tight? I got it. Mm -hmm. This one is good. And I can see the other connection, the other line. Perfect. Hmm, it's actually a little, little loose on the piece of hose. Let's see. I don't like that. Okay. Let's see if this one works. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah, while you're doing a repair like this, make sure you change all those little things because that's our, or those will be the, the ones that will give you a hard time after. And that is connected. And I connected the sensor in, in there as well. Now we need to put the injectors in place. Same thing. Um, let me put some of the tools away. I'm gonna need that uh, long screwdriver. Use it as a as a hand to guide the injector. So much crap on this side. Wow. And I need to lift both ends. Uh, again, I need three hands. Ah, that's going to be very hard. You can feel it already. Maybe you can start the other way. Putting this one first. What is holding it so tight? There's a fuel, fuel line. These two are easy. Oh, thank you, Lord. I think I have it. And I can just get the middle one. It's just almost in. I think I do have it. So let's set up, up the bolts in there so that I can go out. And then we can check it with a mirror. These are copper threads. They stay so clean. I was able to pretty much put the bolt all the way through with the magnet. We got one more here. All right. I'm going to tie them up. I mean, you can, like, you will see on your car, but I can see the fuel rail all the way down to where it seats. So either the injectors are completely out, which I don't think is the case, or they're set correctly in place. All right, so that's tight. And now I need the mirror.
and <laughs> even with the mirror it's hard to say yeah these ones are perfect i need to see this one we go grab a smaller one uh <clears throat> where are you uh, right here Bucket light. Come on. Need to focus the the beam so I can see better. I want to make sure the injector is all the way in, which it should. And these are the things that you got to take your time and make sure it's right because these are the ones that can make you done or redo everything. Yeah, everything is fine. All right, so this is done as far as the fuel rail goes. I can put the harness where it goes. I'm pushing it down. It's kind of like trying to see. Those little clamps. I swear it's like you need to have a third hand for this. <laughs> it's not easy, but it's done. Got another connector in here, which is for the uh, uh, come on, the crankcase ventilation solenoid, and I'm gonna need to put that uh, clamp from under it, and that is gonna be a fun one to do too. Might not be so bad. Hopefully. Let's put this ball here. Need to move the wire so my way a little bit. This is gonna be easy. <laughs> Hopefully you see my, or hear the sarcasm in my voice. But you know, I don't care. The rest is done and it's, it's hard. All of this is so tight. So one clamp is the last of my worries. I will take my time.
Yeah, it's it's not hot at all. It is under the manifold, so I'm not be able to show you that. Let me get a an eight. That is gonna be the hard part. Get that one tight. Lucky is plastic, so you can get it close by hand. All right. Now we can plug this in. We can put this other vacuum connection. And we need the eight for that. And at last, we will tie the boots. We're done. Trying to tie the clamp with all the wire in the middle. Okay. Now when it's done, you can put the mirror away. So I guess I was wrong and the orange uh, gloves are the ones for this because no, I couldn't use that. The black ones, you need a little more of a feeling of what you're doing. Then I put that quarter inch away and it, because I don't see it in there. Yep. No, it's not quarter. That's why I was there. Okay. Now when it's tight. Perfect. And we don't need the seven no more. Now we have throttle valve and intake hose. Get the hose in there first before you put the valve or throttle body. Either way you want to name it. Because right now, there's plenty of room. So we can drop the hose in, in there. It's not gonna be in our way, hopefully. Because it's just not, not room. No room at all. Uh, you know what, no. We're gonna have to fight it. That's gonna be just my way to put the bolt for the throttle valve. All right, we can connect it. Put 
put at least two of them so you can release the, the throttle body, throttle ball, throttle body, same thing, right? Now we got this bracket. It has a 10 in the, in the bottom. Yeah, making it hard. As I always say, put everything by hand, and then when you have everything in place, then you're gonna start tightening up. We have a 10 millimeter nut at the bottom of that little bracket. Not sure if you guys can see it. Let me make sure that you guys are at least seeing something. Yeah. It's not such a bad capture in there. Sorry for the shaking. I'm just adjusting the camera for you. All right, so what I was saying, we have a five millimeter and then the 10 millimeter, five millimeter Allen and 10 millimeter regular. I got only this long one. Don't over tight. Remember, it's not a tire. I don't need that train no more. Put in the tray away. <clears throat> I like those uh, tray from Matco. They're lifetime warranty. I'm not sure if anyone else does that. Uh, Cornwell says them and it's not happening, you know, everybody else. But Matco, good price, lifetime warranty. So, kudos for that. Just going to double check the, the balls are nice and tight and they feel good, so, yep. Yeah, no problem with that. They're tight enough. All right now we can fight these toes in. Sh shouldn't be, yeah, that's not so hard. The connection of the photo ball is the one that's always a little harder to get in. So get that one first. And then obviously the bottom one, right? The air filter housing. And that one is in. If I remember correctly, those are eight. Nope, they're seven. I did not remember correctly. Yeah, that one is that one is eight. Why would you put two different sizes on the same hose? That one is seven. Those are seven. This one is eight. Well, well, it's not that it's something that hard. Just don't understand why different sizes of fasteners on the same thing, right?
opponent goes away, so I'll be right back, guys. All right, so I need the air filter. I forgot to mention, since the start of, of this video, I am working with the battery disconnected. Always do. You don't want to have, you know, sparks or anything in here creating a fire. All right, guys, uh, I'm just going to visually check everything again, make sure that I am not missing an obvious thing. No, everything looks, looks good. I am definitely expecting to have probably a little longer cranking or um, some smoke from the cleaning, but I think we're ready to go. So let me plug the battery and crack this beast. The battery on these cars are in the front. I think at the beginning of the video, I show the front of the car, you'll see. All right. And now in these cars, I'm gonna have to push the clutch and start it. Oh, this is manual transmission, right? So make sure before you crank it, that is a neutral. I'm glad I did because it was not. Somebody was here. All right, car is running. Let me quickly check for any leaks or anything. We have a little bit of a smoke, not much. Didn't put a hose in it, but it's just a little smoke, not much. We got all, all the doors on the shop open. Yeah, I don't see any leaks. Everything is looking good. I'm gonna take you guys with me, as you can see. You can see the, oh, let me zoom out. You can see the smoke coming. Hopefully you guys can see the belt in there too. But this microphone takes the, the sound of the engine most likely away. But it's running really smooth. You can see no more smoke. It was just a little bit at a start. Idle right now is, in, let's see. It's a little under 1,000. You can see this has 92,000 miles. For a 2,000, it's very good, right? All right, guys, I'm going to call this done. I'm going to put a little extra love probably on the on the top. Let me show you what I do. I usually just spray it. Um, I got this chemical. Let me show it to you. And I use a long brush. Let me get everything together. So I'm gonna show you what I do. This is again that's just my my thing. I have everything nice and clean. I use this uh it's a stainless steel protection from women, but I find out it's a very nice for detailing. It does a very good work. So I just spray a little bit of it like that. And then I use, again, just a frame brush like that. And this will make look this car like brand new out of the out of the dealer. Obviously, I did clean all the stuff before I do this because I am not moving dirt. I am just giving a little bit more of a shiny and letting it warm up at the same time. 
So it's not that we cannot use this time for something else. All right, so I leave it in there for five, five to 10 minutes and I come back again with the brush. And that is going to look really, really nice. So again, if you want to give that extra love to your work or your repair, it's up to you. All right, guys, uh, this is the end of the video. Car is running very good. I'll see you next time.